In this setup here, I have my iPad Pro as a camera field monitor. In this video, I'm going to take you step by step on how I set this up. Let's get into it. With the release of iPad OS 17, iPads with a USB C port are now UVC compatible. UVC stands for USB Video Class. These usually refer to web USB webcams that you can plug into a compatible OS, such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and now iPad OS. My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today we're talking about this UVC compatibility in iPad OS 17. And one of the applications that we're going to use is as a field monitor for our camera. Now, UVC allows an iPad to use an external webcam in FaceTime or any compatible application that supports UVC. But not only USB webcams support UVC, but also capture cards. Capture cards take any HDMI signal from any device and brings it in as a webcam. So we're talking now as you can use this for, let's say, a gaming console, an external monitor for a computer, uh, or a capture card for a camera, compatible camera. In this case, we're using it as a field monitor. Why have a field monitor or a camera field monitor? Well, having the larger screen helps not only with focus, but also composition. So whether you're in front of the camera doing a vlog or a video like this, or behind the camera, it's nice to look at a bigger screen for composition. So I'm gonna take you through my setup here and then give you the pros and cons of doing this method here. So let me quickly take you through my setup here. Of course, we have our iPad. You need a compatible iPad with USB-C. In my case here, I have the M1 11 inch iPad Pro. Then you need a camera that has a HDMI out signal. Here I have the Sony A6400. This does have a flip up screen. So depending on your application, this might be sufficient for you. But if you compare this little tiny screen to this iPad here, night and day, right? And then you have the HDMI out here. So I have a micro HDMI to full size HDMI adapter. Then I have an HDMI cable coming out. You can buy a micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable. And so you don't need the adapter, but I like using the adapter because I can change the length of the cable depending on the application. Now this is all feeding into a Cam Link 4K a USB capture card. This is over $100, which might be out of budget and overkill for some people, especially if you're only using it as a field monitor here. So I would recommend getting one of those generic USB capture cards. I have like two or three of these. Um, these are, uh, at the time I bought this, this was $10. You can buy anywhere between $10 to $20. I'll put links in the description below. Then out of the capture card, we have a USB-A to USB-C adapter that's feeding right into the iPad. So let me give you a summary on everything you need to make this work. You need a USB-C equipped iPad. Here I have my iPad Pro, but even the 10th generation iPad now has USB-C on it. Then you need a capture card. I have my Cam Lake 4K here, but you don't need to spend over $100 on a capture card. You can use one of these generic USB capture cards. Now this USB capture card has USB-A on it, so I need a USB-A to USB-C adapter to make it work. They do sell USB-C capture cards at a very affordable price. Then you need to take that signal out of your camera and bring it into the capture card. So usually the cameras these days have micro HDMI. So I have a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter here. You can get a cable that's micro HDMI to full size HDMI. So I'll link that in the description below. And lastly, you need the proper software on the iPad to make that work. And I'm going to show you that right now. As far as iPad apps are concerned, they're usually pretty simple. There are a number of them on the app store, but the two main ones I found were Orion and Chemex. Orion is made by the makers of the Halide camera app, which is an awesome app for a lot of manual controls for your camera. But this one is very simple. You just very pretty much plug in the USB-C cable and the picture will show. You can change some of the display settings. They do have a paid version, which gives you more advanced settings as far as the display is concerned. But Cam X is the one I mainly use. It not only displays the camera, but it also lets you capture the video and audio coming from the capture card itself. And once you have something plugged in, then it will show up in this area right here. You can go ahead and click those settings and you can change the different resolution, uh, frame rates, formats, if the device supports it. So 
uh, I, I like this version. I would use ChemX as far as my video monitoring is concerned. So let's test out to see if there's any lag introduced with this setup. So to test this out, I actually have a camera monitor here. This is the Field World T7 7 inch camera monitor. Then I have my iPad Pro right next to it. I'm filming this on my GoPro Hero 7 at 1080p at 240 frames per second. So we'll be able to slow down the footage to see if there's any lag. I'm filming this on the A6500, which is going into an HDMI splitter for this test only. But with the iPad Pro, what's going on is it's going through out, out of the camera into a capture card into iPad OS. So there could be some lag introduced there. What's happening with the field, field order monitor is it's going directly from the camera into the monitor. So there's zero to very little lag. So I'm gonna do some motion here and then we're gonna slow down this footage to see if there's any lag going. So. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. I brought, brought in our footage here. I zoomed in on the monitors themselves. This timeline here is at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Remember we shot our footage on our GoPro at 240 frames per second. So I'm able to slow down this footage comfortably or four times. So if I go ahead and hit play, even in slow motion, it's hard to see any lag or latency, at least any perceptible latency. But if we go frame by frame, let's go to this shot here. I'm gonna go to, let's say, around here. You can see my hand is pointing to the piece of tape on the wall there. Now, if we go to the iPad screen, it's a little bit behind. So how many frames behind? Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Let's say about five frames behind. And at five frames at 60 frames per second, that's about 0 0.08 seconds of latency. Now, if you're worried about 0 0.08 seconds of latency, then you're probably using a field monitor and a pro probably a pretty high-end one as well. So really there is no perceptible latency at all. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this footage back to about 100%. We're gonna go ahead and hit, go and hit play. And it's really, you can't really see any latency at all. So why do this? Well, if you're traveling and you need a monitor with your camera and you wanna travel light, bringing a field monitor for your camera can be quite cumbersome actually. Cause it's not only the monitor you're bringing, you're bringing the battery, you're bringing the charger that charges the battery that powers the monitor. In other words, the bulk can add up quite quickly. If you're bringing your iPad already anyway, having a few adapters and cables with you is quite minimal. And even if you have this at your home set up here uh, with the mounts attached to a tripod, this is an awesome setup because using the iPad display, especially the iPad Pros, the 11 inch and especially the 12.9 inch, it's hard to be that high quality display on the iPad Pros especially. Now, one thing to watch out for is the power drain. This kind of setup does drain the power of the iPad quite quickly. Now I haven't done any extensive tests on it. I think you could probably get a good one or two hours of usage at a full charge. Now you can use a USB-C hub. I tried this USB-C adapter where it was USB-C on one end and it splits off into USB-A and USB-C for power, but that didn't work for me. When I plugged in the power, the display disappeared. So I'm gonna have to return that but you can use a USB-C hub. Again, that does add to the bulk. And after that, you're gonna need a way to power it. So you can use a USB battery bank. But after that, you can probably use that to power the iPad and the camera itself. So that's one good option there. So iPad OS 17 has really opened the way to use the iPad in new ways. What other ways can you think of using it? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider hitting that subscribe button. Till the next one, see ya.